Google has not been at the forefront of the technology era that we are witnessing right now. The, it was probably late to the AI models discussion where the Gemini series of model or what started with BARD was not the top two contenders most of the time. I think we have seen Chat GPT and Anthropic Cloud, Claude going head to head. And, uh, you know, Gemini was somewhere present, uh, but haven't seen a lot of appreciation and praises for it. At the same time, in terms of tooling and ecosystem, they haven't also made a insane amount of changes. And the product, in my view, has also been very costly. While they have bundled services like 2, G, two terabyte of data, but the whole cool model itself hasn't ex been excited enough so far for me to use it. I'm probably looking to switch and give it a try because I kind of keep spinning and experimenting with different LLMs. So what they've done is they've bought in a new LLM, but in not just a new LLM, which is Gemini, Gemini 2.0 or Gemini 2.0, what they have also introduced are two new projects. The first is called Project Astra, which is about agents. The second is Project Mariner, which is agents that can go deeper. So in this video, I'm gonna condense this information of about 11 minutes and try to talk about that in the next four or five minutes. I'll try to give an overview of what each of the sections talk about. So we have the formal introduction to the Gemini 2.0 model, which is the new AI model for the agentic era. I think what they're approaching this whole conversation is they're trying to come up with a general agent or like a super agent that can do a lot of things. Why is this any different than others? Well, I think that most other AI agents discussion that we have seen in the past have been very geared towards agents focused on a certain task or a certain theme. And then there's multi collaborative agent paradigm that has been talked about. What Google is saying is that they are bringing in a new model, which is obviously multimodal and all, but it is designed for an agent era. What that is, you know, what's so specific about this is something that I have to experiment. But they have, uh, you know, they have they have introduced certain specific models like the Flash model, which you are reading on the screen. Which Flash is just, uh, you know, it's fast model. It has a faster response time. You can probably think of it like something like Haiku or something. I've not used it, but it could be used for a variety of purposes like searches, code generation. Uh, transcription, transliterations, and things like that. So it, it's a good model. 2.0 flash, uh, exp if, if I am, um, right, I don't know, probably maybe there's a different sort of distinction. But so far, this model seems to beat everything out in the 1.5 family. But that's not exciting enough, if you ask me, because most models, if an organization is releasing it, Previously, they were kind of comparing it across the landscape, like OpenAI comparison, Gemini comparison, Anthropic Cloud comparison, but now they are just comparing it to the predecessor model. And what that is, is, you know, very natural. Like it's almost commodity at this point in time that if you release a new version of the model, you have to say it's better than the previous one. At this point, I don't even look at all of these benchmarks because these benchmarks are just, uh, it, I think the whole LLM space have overgrown these benchmarks and we are uh, carrying forward some of these benchmarks uh, for a pointless reason. I think like, for example, MMLU Pro, uh, certain new, I think, benchmarks are needed. And there's an Apple paper, which I talked about, where Apple has clearly called this out that a lot of the reasoning and the data underlying all of these matrices is just, you know, too, is, is not the best way to approach this. But anyway, I'll move forward. So uh, what they're trying to talk about with Flash and uh, Project Astra essentially is Astra is like you have agents that can do multimodal understanding of the real world. So you have access to Google search, you have lens, map, etc. And all of this, the understanding is Gemini is very deeply integrated into the whole Android ecosystem technically. So it can have dialogues in different languages. It will have better memory. It will have improved latency. Now what I see is the workings of a Siri-like interface. Of course, Siri with Apple intelligence, I have not tried and I'm not hearing great reviews about it, but this sounds very much similar. Where have we learned and listened about this? It's that. However, the second part was more convincing for me and very, very interesting. Project Mariner is an early research prototype. And now, and you know, when anybody uses 
use the word research and prototype in the same sentence you have to be a little cautious as to the state of technology and what it can do but the idea is that they are saying this is exploring the futures of human agent interaction starting with your browser under the hood this is a chrome extension that can complete tasks for you so it can interact with the web browser it can you know interact with elements like text code images forms etc so probably you can just talk to it and say hey fill up this form for me and uh, most likely it's going to go ahead and do it uh, something like that so they have achieved a lot of real world web tasks i don't know what real world uh, refers to again these benchmarks are just uh, I'm, I'm not super fond of these benchmarks but these capabilities sound very similar to what Claude started with doing, which is the screen control feature and all that. Obviously, there's a lot of safety and security that has to be built on this. But this kind of overview capability, like, you know, the ability to give agents just see what's happening in the computer, that's pretty powerful. And then there's something else called Jules, which is how can AI agents help developers? Now, this is literally an experimental AI powered code agent that can integrate directly in your workflow. So you can have a plan generated, you can have a code fixed, you can execute it. You can literally uh, have it like an intern under a developer, right? So this this can probably be thought of as a good effort towards pair programming. I, I think the whole uh, my point of view around uh, the developer ecosystem specifically with LLM and agentic AI is almost there i think we'll see something which is gonna just disrupt this market uh, hugely and immensely because the quality of code these llms are generating where was already good with agents you have the ability to add in a lot of reasoning under the hood so and you know with a lot of tools like search and all you can further look up the internet in terms of knowledge bases and all that so it will not be very far when will we see uh, code development getting fundamentally changed. How far? I don't know. I don't have a point of view. Uh, agents in games and other domains, I'm not going to touch upon this because I think uh, there's, there's, I think I just read somebody that there's a variant or something for uh, Stockfish where they have built it on transformer models. I don't know. People are trying to build LLM for chess. I don't like it. Uh, so yeah, that's what Google is up to. Uh, this was more of a commentary on it. I'm going to try and explore this and see where this is headed. And uh, until then, reach out for the next video. If you like this more casual kind of a conversation about a technology that's popping up, please, please hit subscribe and share the video. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.